Hello YouTube, this is Omijan here, bringing you the first in a series where I look at the backstory of Black Ops 2 Zombies. I haven't seen that many people going too in depth into this, but I'm just going to look at some of the features of the maps and take a guess on what the background story is of them. Zombie story has always been sort of subjective, they live, leave sort of clues, but rarely something that gives a definitive story and they leave it up to the player to sort of come up with one themselves. So this is what I think is the background story for Transit, the Avogadro and the Denizens. So in the closing weeks of World War II, the United States government and the Soviet Union were in a better race to steal as much German technology as they could. They knew that there was going to be an up and coming Cold War between the two so they wanted to get as much um, German research to give them an edge. Such weapons were the Mauss Super Tank V2 rockets and the ME262 ME jet fighter. So much of the German technology that the US managed to get was stored in the underground labs underneath the Pentagon, that's five, um, such as the Winter's Hoyle, some prototype teleporters and other st st stuff that we can see in that map. However, this wasn't the only area that um, the US were carrying out research into 115 and other elements. One such project was the Green Run facility in California. It was theorized that element 115 was capable of absorbing electricity, and this is what contributed towards powering the, the Wunderwaffe DK2, the ray gun, and other devices in Germany. Most of the research was eventually sh shelved as few benefits could be found for it. However, in the early 21st century, consumerism was demanding ever more convenient technology, e.g. iPhones and stuff. It want they wanted it to be mini miniaturized and convenient. However, this was limited by the batteries that were needed to power such devices, um, which restricted how small they could be made. It was proposed that if you could you'd inject humans one, with 115, you could convert the body into a living battery, which could then wirelessly power these devices. One technician at the Green Run facility demonstrated this by creating a wireless power generator using nothing more than a mannequin and a fan. Tests into injecting the 115 were initially carried out on animals. However, these animals developed strange muta mutations. They became known as cherubs denizens or simply mutants to the labs. They were pretty ugly to look at and their skin reacted to direct light, meaning they had to be stored in dark environments where light could not harm their skin. Despite these creatures, research continued. It was argued that 115 had a special property that would not cause these reactions, but this was unique only to humans, as it based on the zombies that didn't mutate anywhere near as much as the creatures. It was argued that our DNA was unique and only a human test subject would have positive results and it was misleading to carry out animal research. Finally, clearance for a human test subject was given in the early 2020s. At first, the results looked hopeful, but when a current was applied, the subject's entire body was converted into electricity. The scientists in the facility panicked and sealed the creature inside the reactor core of the facility, trapping it, but also meaning that the facility lost its power supply. The facility was then abandoned and lay quiet for years, but following the shattering of the earth by Maxis, the denizens were released from their cages and fled into the fog where they could survive, preying on any survivors trying to flee the area. The Avogadro waited patiently in its core, waiting to be free. Hope you've enjoyed this look into the background of transit. This has been Omegent. Thank you for listening and goodbye.